Well, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pamela Ray, Calgirl Pammy, with hope for today. Praise God coming to you from beautiful downtown Kalispell, Montana, or it was beautiful. If you've been following the news at all about what's been happening out here in the Pacific Northwest and Canada, well, I had a shocker this morning. I was getting out uh, to ride my bike, planning to get some exercise, riding on my bike, uh, uh, you know, getting the old cardiovascular going today. And unfortunately, <laughs> that did not happen because when I looked out the window, out my window over here, I saw what looked like horrible haze. At first I thought, oh, it's a foggy, rainy, whatever day. But the closer I looked at it, I realized this is not haze um, from uh, fog or uh, it's uh, from forest fire. This is very early, friends, in the season for forest fires in this area. Usually for Montana, it's in August. After a long summer, things get drier and drier and drier and much more prone to forest fires. But up above us in Alberta uh, and British Columbia and even Saskatchewan, but primarily in Alberta, they've been having over 100 wildfires and forest fires right now. It's very, very serious what's going on uh, up there. People, at least 30,000 people up in Alberta have had to be evacuated. The air quality is very poor. In fact, they recommended here in our area to not go out. Um, I was gonna go out on my bike, exercise, get this body in shape for the summer, and it didn't happen. I said stay indoors, so I've been keeping my air purifier going, but it's very serious right now. Um, we need to say a prayer for the people up there in that region, and where I'm at, I'm just an hour and a half drive from the border of uh, Alberta, Canada, so it's very close. And it's absolutely pouring over the border, um, and some wildfires are in British Columbia and others in Saskatchewan, but it's coming over, over, over the border. And we have a, a very smoky day out there. The fires are horrific. I will tell you something about the dangers of forest fires. Two years ago, I was working arts and crafts with my wonderful, precious Native American uh, Indian children, the Blackfeet tribe, uh, with some wonderful Christian Native people up there running a wonderful summer camp for the youth, teaching arts and crafts. Well, unfortunately, it was held in August where there usually are many forest fires. Uh, throughout this whole region of Canada and the Pacific Northwest because of all the millions of acres of beautiful uh, pine trees, lodgepole, spruce, the evergreen trees that are uh, native to the Rocky Mountains in this region, not like the deciduous. So we have green all year round. However, they can uh, burn with great fury uh, with forest fires. So anyhow, there have been horrible forest fires that season. And up there in Browning, Montana, the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, two hours north of us in Kalispell at the other end of Glacier National Park, oh, that smoke was just pouring across that scene. But I didn't want to leave the kids, and they kept the camp open. But boy, did I ever pay a price. After several days of inhaling that day and night uh, and returning home, I was so very sick. My lungs were under horrible attack. In fact, um, it got complicated, went into a form of type of pneumonia. Particulate matter from forest fires is very, very dangerous because of what it can burn up and then just uh, create tiny little particles of it. It can be very toxic, very deadly, and it took me weeks and weeks to recover. I was weak at times. I almost lost my ability to breathe completely. And had it not been for the fact that I'm a praying Christian that trusts in Jesus Christ, and my wonderful Christian friend and co-worker for Christ, Sylvia, praying over me every single day and helping me through that, I could have, I could have died. And um, moving on with that subject of health, I have to share that, well, yes, I put in the comment section of my last video that I had been in um, YouTube jail for a censorship of something that doesn't even make sense to me, but we won't even go there. Um, so anyhow, but at the same time, these past three weeks, I have been very ill with a serious condition with my leg that if I had not been able to successfully address it, treat it, uh, find all the right holistic, organic health cures, essential oils to apply onto it to kill this terrible 
infection and, and case of candidiasis just spreading and making my skin in terrible shape. I could have even reached the possibility of deep um, bacterial infection and even losing my lower left leg. It was very, very serious. But again, because I am a praying Christian and I do believe in the Word of God, and Sylvia was praying with me and several other of my Christian friends, the leg condition is almost completely resolved now. The skin is totally healed. Nothing of what it was before is just red around it, and I have to keep treating it with certain uh, products, but it is absolutely recovering. And of course, be very careful what I eat and what I drink. Not one trace of sugar, and no, I'm not diabetic, but sugar can feed fungus and candidiasis, even growing on your skin like mold grows on in orange peel. Um, but I had also become very ill because during that crisis of the leg, a friend had given me some ivermectin. Now, many of us have heard about the virtues of ivermectin. Yes, it's used for parasites, horses, but there are people versions of ivermectin too, but you better be very careful that the version you're taking is made for people and not made for animals. Well, I never realized that when that friend gave me the ivermectin, I didn't know which one it might have been. I just thought, well, it, it, you know, it's uh, allegedly safe for people. So I tried some ivermectin for that, and you would not believe the horrific, horrific, deadly, toxic, allergic reaction my body responded to that with. It was horrible. In fact, I couldn't have made videos if I wanted to because horrific welts and sores broke out on both sides of my face. My arms, my hands are relatively healed now, but still there is scarring and healing on my arms. I still have uh, the same kind of horrific, irritating skin rash on my knees. Um, and it had a horrific effect, like my body trying to detox, detox, get it out of my system. It was serious. And I was so weak and so ill from that, you know. So I couldn't have done videos if I'd wanted to. But again, Jesus Christ always comes through. And anytime I should become ill, I'm not going to make videos during that time because it's not for the glory of God. The Bible says Jesus Christ has borne our sicknesses, our sorrows, by his stripes we are healed. And I want to live out that reality of what his word promises every single day as a testimony to viewers, to readers on my blog or vlogging or Facebook. I like to share a good testimony of what the Lord has done. So I can say that the Lord has restored my leg that could have and was looking like it was moving into the state that if it hadn't responded to the treatment and prayers, that I was getting for it, it could have gone into very deep secondary infections leading to absolute crisis with my leg. Very serious. Lots of prayer and I would say over a thousand dollars worth of health care, supplements, vitamins, different treatments, different things. Holistic essential oils are expensive. Many supplements that are needed were expensive, but again, it's still cheaper than going the conventional medical route. So I was absolutely... Um, in a state of recovery now with my left leg, praise God, to the point where I was ready to ride my bike today, get the cardiovascular going, get this weight off, get these muscles built up, and uh, and yes, I have a good set of Bowflex uh, hand weights. It's very important uh, to do free weights and free uh, weight lifting. Um, anyhow, I really want to maintain my health. I really want to, so I can serve the Lord. It's hard to serve Him when you're sick, as I saw these past several weeks. So I still ask for your prayers to keep me in the saddle and uh, moving me to total recovery. My skin still needs some healing, but the worst of it is over and the toxins are truly almost completely out, but very dangerous. But it was a lesson well learned because a lot of people were touting, oh, the, you know, and some people have no reaction at all, but I began to scour the internet on the subject of what kind of reactions that are negative you might have to ivermectin. And they said, yes, absolutely, severe skin rash can occur. Now somebody was trying to berate me on Facebook over that and said, oh, well, no, the ivermectin didn't do it. It was just because it was like a candida die off in this, this, this a Herkheimer reaction where your body is detoxing. No, that was not it at all. I know my body. I know when I detox what to expect. This was horrifying. It was frightening. It was a chemical. It was an allergic reaction to the chemicals in that. 
Now, not everybody will have that. But I'm saying, friends, it, from this, it's a lesson well learned. Uh, just don't casually accept something that's typically a prescription from a friend thinking, well, you're hearing everybody else, it's okay. Unless you, uh, you really should get it from a professional source or people that are in the know. And you really should make sure which version you have. It turns out that this particular version came out of Mexico. So, as I did research, um, and uh, it, the, the fault was all mine. I should have been much more careful, but it was a lesson we'll learn. And normally I never turn to pharmaceuticals anyhow. I've been without a doctor, no medical records, no doctors, no pharmaceuticals for 50 years. So um, that's just has been my rub, but my leg I was so concerned about and wondering about certain things causing it that I thought, well, I've heard a lot of good things about ivermectin. And yes, for some people, it may work fine. And for the horses that take it, fine. But for me, it was deadly. But it was a lesson we'll learn. I will not repeat that <laughs> mistake again. Praise God. And the Lord has healed me completely. And praise God, I could make this video. So anyhow, friends, I am very concerned about what's happening up there in British Columbia and Alberta. And uh, again, it's... it's um, disturbing what's happening because well the articles that I read here online with my laptop and uh, I'll show you some photos of the wildfires but they said now because of this series of uh, unusual series of wildfires so extreme etc it's going to affect the cattle and the beef industry of Alberta which is the major supplier of beef to Canada and it's going to affect a uh, crops as well hmm, the food supply affected and uh, so it's very interesting uh, to follow the situation up there I just pray it does not spread down over the border heavily into Montana there's always that possibility because we have all these millions of acres of pine forests that uh, just go up in smoke and flames when <laughs> when the right seasons are there and the right situations are there um, and Glacier National Park, of course, is one of those regions. So anyhow, we need to pray. And at least 30,000 people up there have been evacuated from their homes. And there may be more. This is very, very sad. And firefighters right now are laying down their lives to protect people um, from that horrible situation. But let me just show you. Here's one picture that I was able to get uh, off the Internet um, here. Very, very sad. Uh, very extreme uh, fires that they're getting um, throughout Alberta right now and Saskatchewan and parts of British Columbia. Very, very bad. As you can see here, extreme serious. So the good people up there really need our prayers at this time because it is affecting lives. It has the power to spread. As you can see how it just burns, consuming everything in its path. Very, very serious. So, and I have Christian friends up there in Alberta and in Canada and many good people up there. So friends, will you pray with me about this crisis? Um, I know that God has the power to intervene and prayer changes things. So if you'll pray with me, we'll believe God for a miracle. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the sacred name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and the only hope to get to heaven and escape hell, and the only Messiah you will ever send, Father God, to Israel, and the only Savior of the world. Father, we come to you in his name alone, and we ask you right now, to be merciful to the people of, of British Columbia, Father God, Alberta, Saskatchewan, places that are being affected and the air quality, very dangerous for elderly people, people with compromised immune systems and health issues and breathing issues, including right here in Montana, where it's affecting the whole state. So Lord, we pray for divine intervention. We cover your people with the precious power of the blood of Jesus. We ask you to bring your people through this crisis and save those who are not your people as they seek help and solutions from divine help. Father, you are the answer through Jesus Christ, your son. Father, we pray for divine grace. Father, for you own the weather. 
not the military weather modification people, but you are Lord over the weather and over this planet. We ask you, Lord, to send great rain showers, whatever it takes, Lord, because for the sake of the elect father, uh, your children are endangered along with all of this and many others besides. We ask for mercy in this state and in this situation and for Alberta and Canada and beyond. Thank you, Lord. We give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, it's good to finally be able to make some videos. Um, I didn't know when I would be able to because of health issues. And I finally decided today was the day I would step out in faith. Hallelujah. And do this. Finally, you know, I'm feeling so much better than I was so sick. But I learned a very good lesson about once again, pharmaceuticals that typically I've avoided all my life. And this even further reminds me that they may be great for some people, uh, but for me, the risk is not worth it. I do not respond well, but Jesus brought me through. Praise the Lord God, the Almighty. Well, we finally are experiencing warmer southern, uh, uh, summer weather. We're finally getting heat. Or if I finally, about a week ago, had the first day that I could say I sweated on a summer day because winter remains so long here, but boy, when summer comes, blam, the trees just overnight with that summer heat and sunshine, the leaves pop on, the buds come out, all the trees are budding and the leaves are on and it's just beautiful and it's beautiful now over at lovely Glacier National Park where I'm gonna be going with my wonderful Christian friend and prayer warrior associate, Sylvia. She has an e-bike, I have an e-bike and we are going to be exercising fervently to get in shape for the summer for outreach. I am very concerned, friends, as I've stated previously on my previous video. And by the way, I decided it's time to just refresh my whole YouTube channel and just like the new year, out with the old and in with the new. And I'm going to be starting a whole new series of fresh new videos to share things with people. Um, but we want to be in shape because there's so much outreach that needs to be done now. God spoke to me very clearly as I was very sick and struggling to recover and spending hours in prayer. I asked him about my future, my ministry, what he wanted me to do. And I said, well, Lord, you know that I've given you over 25 years of my life at the leading of God 25 years ago to become involved in alternative news media researching the news behind the news to give to your people because so much of it is so important that people know but the lord spoke to me about that and he said i am releasing you from that call i want you now to focus on the answer the only hope and the only answer to everything you've ever reported on warning my people warning others telling them these things are planned these things are coming the lord told me some very severe things as well about all of this, he um, spoke to me very clearly because for over 25 years, on the behalf of millions of you Christian viewers out there across North America and Canada, when I began to find out things from CIA sources, Pentagon sources, and many other um, whistleblowers explaining to me the horrific plans of a future New World Order agenda, I wept before the Lord. I cried out as Queen Esther cried out to King Ahasuerus, my people have been marked for slaughter. They've been marked for death. Oh, spare my people. I have been praying the same thing on behalf of the Christians of the North American continent. And actually it goes far beyond North America, but because I'm here, I was focusing on that. So I've had many a prayer journey, fasting and praying and weeping before the Lord over this nation, living out of my vehicle because I couldn't afford motels, hotels, etc. living on the edge, very, very rough life for Christ. But I had to do it to pray over this country and begging him to hold these things back a season longer for the sake of the elect and to restrain the wickedness and the madness of these people behind it. But the Lord told me that these things will be held back no longer. Much of it is being allowed for judgment upon this nation. When I prayed and asked him about this, he spoke to me very clearly. He said, the iniquity of the Amorites is full. Many of you who read the Bible and the Old Testament understand what that means, and many of you do not. And here is exactly what it means. But I'm speaking from what the Holy Spirit told me distinctly after much soul searching and prayer and asking him. 
we go back in the Old Testament to where God spoke to Abraham and told him, hey, every place that your foot is set upon here in the land of Canaan, that whole region that was later to become Israel in the promised land, he said, I give it to you and to your descendants and to your seed. But he said, know that your people will be strangers in a strange land for 400 years, and then I will bring them out because the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full, or the iniquity of the dwellers, those who dwell, the Canaanites and Jebusites, Philistines and others who dwelled and occupied in the promised land that God promised to Abraham, their sins were not yet bad enough, worthy of death and judgment. They had not reached that point and that level yet. He said the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. But Later, I will bring your people out, and then they would be used to have conquest, to battle, to obtain, and to receive what God had promised, the promised land, later to become Eretz Yisrael, or homeland Israel, and uh, to execute judgment on the heathen, on the wickedness, the depravity, the horrible abominations, these Canaanites, Philistines, and others worshiping idols, uh, sacrificing their infants to Moloch. And doing horrible things and worshiping fake gods and horrible things and God was using the Jews of that time and season as instruments of judgment upon the wickedness in the promised land that he promised to give to Abraham and his seed so we see 400 years and then the Holy Spirit took me back in the history of America to the year 1620 the very year that my pilgrim ancestors um, arrived from sailing down the Thames River in the Mayflower and I stood on the banks of the Thames River where the Mayflower once was and they came and arrived eventually at Plymouth Rock and there they made a covenant an everlasting covenant a Mayflower compact covenant with God where they dedicated this continent to the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel they knew that the hands of God the Holy Spirit had brought them here for the Bible says the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof and he gives it to whoever he chooses and God brought my pilgrim ancestors here from great persecution tribulation to this continent to bring the gospel to bring uh, hope uh, for whatever purposes God had in mind but they absolutely fell on their faces before God and dedicated this continent to the glory of God and to the furtherance of the gospel now let us fast forward 400 years from 1620 to 2020 very interesting things about 2020 I had leaked out to me a few years ago before 2020 an army memo stating the following it was not for the public and it said 2020 is the target year for the army to bring America under the new world order, i.e. martial law, the whole agenda to begin to get rolled out. And in 2020, March 13th, Donald Trump declared national martial law. And the Lord spoke to me and he said this. He said, I've heard your prayers for many, many years over this nation on behalf of my endangered people and praying for the lost and the sinners to repent the Lord told me that much of this that I've reported on for many years is being permitted as a rod of judgment on a disobedient and sinful and rebellious nation sinful from the White House down and the Lord spoke to me about many things that are coming that would be fulfilled that were prophesied throughout the years and one of the reasons I wept across America when I heard the prophecies of the horrible judgments that would be brought upon America someday if they did not repent. I said, but Lord, your people are here. They don't merit judgment. They're under the blood of the lamb. Their sins are forgiven. They're not living as the heathen and the pagans do in this nation for the sake of the elect hold it back. And the Lord told me he would. And so I have fasted and prayed and cried my heart out for over 25 years on behalf of, if you're a Christian, on behalf of you, though I know not your name and you never even heard of me perhaps until this video, but I'm just one of God's hidden arrows in his quiver that he has used for many years to make a difference in this nation and in the lives of many. And I paid quite a price and I won't go into the details, 
but I know the voice of the Lord and when he tells me to do something, I lay aside everything, paid career, safety, personal self-interest and put the Lord first and I have done that. But the Lord's told me very recently, he said, the iniquity of the Amorites is full. The 400 years is over. I've waited patiently for these people to repent. And he spoke to my heart. He said, do you see what condition your nation is in today? Oh, how I have shed tears. And I could start pray crying right now, friends, over the grief that I have, over the sinful, depraved, degenerate state of this nation today and the people who are responsible for it, pushing, pushing, pushing satanic agendas of darkness, corruption, iniquity, perversion, that outdoes Sodom and Gomorrah any day, or the times of Noah. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, speak of the days of horrific corruption, sin, wickedness, and depravity, for God felt compelled to bring Noah's flood, saying, it grieves me, it repents me that I have made man. But Noah was found righteous in his generation and was spared that horror. And that another number tied in with judgment is 40. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. And then God told Abraham, 400 years. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, the iniquity of the Amorites is full in your country. I said, Lord, as much as I love this nation, my pilgrim ancestors were a part of founding it to dedicate it to the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel. But I, as an honest Christian, agree with you, Lord. I am on the Lord's side. And I have to say, yes, this nation is truly worthy of judgment for many 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 reasons and only your mercy has held it back for the sake of the elect but the lord told me that now the most important thing he said for years you know he'd called me to warn his people wake them up give them alternative news information and by the way even to this day alternative news information is important find the people that you trust that are reliable and trustworthy and know the truth about what's happening across the world and across america but the Lord told me now the most important thing you can do for me, my child, since you know these things will be held back no longer and many judgments are about to come on this nation, I want you to do everything to reach every lost soul for me that you can across this nation. Because knowing all the alternative news out there is not what saves a soul. You can read all these alternative news websites and get all that, that kind of truth, but the only truth that is eternal and will save your soul from hell and bring you into heaven is the eternal truth that God sent Jesus Christ, his son, into the world to die for our sins. And that when we believe in him, our sins are forgiven and we are given the gift of eternal life. And we do not face damnation from that point on, but we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The Lord told me, give them, give them, give them the most important news of all. And I said, Lord, I actually thank you for doing this to me because I obeyed your voice, got into the world of alternative news journalism to warn your people. But my heart inside was longing to go back to full time child evangelism, evangelism outreach, which I had been doing ever since Bible college for many years, many forms. And I've wanted to go back to that, but I never leave a calling unless God releases me. He said, I'm releasing you. The iniquity of the Amorites is full. And the Lord also reminded me that many times when he sent prophets to Israel and Judah to warn them to repent of their wicked ways and they outlined if you do not repent God's going to bring the armies of Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon upon you there'll be famine plague pestilence etc well the prophets no longer needed to warn ancient sinful Israel and Judah of these things once they began to happen once it started happening that was it their prophecies were fulfilled and that's what the Lord told me he said there's no need to keep warning them because these things are going to unfold so rapidly across the world and across your nation as things get worse in Ukraine and American involvement in all of that horrible situation, which will lead inevitably to Russian and Ukrainian or Russian attack, Russian and Chinese attack on this nation, which has been prophesied many times by valid Christians hearing from the Lord, not a bunch of fly by night dime a dozen fake prophets out there for attention and glory and money and all of that i am so sick and tired friends of these people parading themselves around as apostle so and so bishop so and so a prophet so and so you know a true servant and prophet of god does not have to go around 
magnifying themselves and seeking self-glory, etc. You know, you know when God has called you and you quietly go about the Father's business. And that's what I've done for many, many years now. Simply knowing that I heard from God and I will do his will. The Lord told me the iniquity of the Amorites is filled. And I'm going to tell you, friends, beloved fellow brothers and sisters in Christ in Canada, America, across even the globe, so many things are going to happen. Put your family, your loved ones, your children, your parents, all that you hold dear under the blood of Jesus so that when that judgment comes throughout your region, even as the death angels, when they passed over Egypt to slay the firstborn of every family in Egypt, from the, from the Pharaoh to the lowest slave, those who are under the blood of the lamb, the sacrificed Passover lamb were spared and the angels passed over them, Passover. And the Lord told me, spoke deeply to my heart, cover your homes, your future, your destiny with the blood of the lamb, your loved ones with the blood because many serious things are coming. And he did not give me as so many false prophets are saying, oh, don't worry about these things. Eat, drink, and be merry because you're going to get quickie raptured out. You know, Jesus warned about that. He said, the times will come when you will wish to see, you will desire to see the coming of the Son of God, and you won't see it. In other words, he's not going to necessarily come when our flesh wants him to, and we're getting scared and nervous, and oh my gosh, what's coming next to America or other parts of the world what's coming next bad things are happening to countries all over the world so god bless you christians all over the world you know what you're going through in australia new zealand germany greece all over the world china oh my gracious so the thing is as jesus said be ready for you know not what hour your lord will come but you know he said in matthew 24 when the disciples came and said lord Tell us about the sign of your coming and, and when you're coming, what, what shall we look for on the earth? And Jesus said, one of the warnings he said was, ye shall be hated, my followers, my disciples, shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And we're speaking of end times and he was speaking of the times immediately prior to his return. And who, as an honest born again Christian, can doubt or deny that his coming is very soon, even at the door. Because he said that nation would rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and it would get so bad that if those days were not cut short, there'd be no living thing left alive. That is speaking of what we know of today as weapons of mass destruction. It is here. That hour is right around the corner. But Jesus said before he returns, he said, ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then you shall be delivered up to tribulation and to be put to death. And many of you shall hate one another, betray one another, and fall away, meaning deny Christ. But he went on to say, but he that endureth, or she that endureth, unto the end, the same shall be saved. Not he that is raptured, but he that endureth unto the end. In other words, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. Some will be delivered, and others will be delivered up unto martyrdom. But many and the Holy Spirit has borne witness to many honest men and women of God in this generation that we will go through many things before he comes for his own. It will not be in our timing, but in God's timing. And what he permits, he permits to purify and cleanse his church. For friends, I will tell you, it says in the book of Daniel, that many shall fall and be purified, meaning falling under persecution, tribulation, uh, for the and be purified, washed, Cleanse, oh, persecution does much to purify people's hearts and make them pure and bring them closer to the Lord. Many shall fall and be purified. Praise God. But the good news is Jesus is with us through everything. Like the horrible situation I've just come through the past couple of weeks, even wondering if I would end up losing my left leg. Uh, just many things. But I knew that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, was with me to bring me through. I trust him. And friends, I will be very honest with you. I can only be honest as a Christian. But I will say this. Do you think it's easy with Russia constantly threatening 
nuclear attack and hypersonic missile attacks on America, do you think it's easy to be in a state like Montana, which is absolutely one of three nuclear doomsday states that when Russia and many believe aided with China moves to attack America, that they will literally, this whole state will go up in smoke and flames to in a preemptive attack designed to get rid of all of our missile defense system in Montana and then down in Wyoming and over in North Dakota so that we cannot defend ourselves from oncoming missiles and attacks from Russia and I do believe also inevitably China. They'll take out our defense system and the military have uh, declared that when that happens <clears throat> no living thing will be left in Montana. Same for Wyoming, same for North Dakota. It's stressful to have to live with that every single day to be here. But I also say, Lord, but what about the lost? What about the many on the Native American reservations? Seven reservations and 12 tribes. So many do not know Jesus. So many children do not know him. And when these things come, it could even be a extinction events for some tribes. So really, friends, that's I'm not in this world to save myself and to save my life. My soul is saved. If I die, I go to heaven. If many of these people die, they go to hell. I can't live with that on my conscience. So I'm trying everything I can and asking God. And I was feeling so weak. I thought, Lord, I may have to leave Montana, go to a warmer state, being so sick these past three or even four weeks and having ongoing health issues. But I said, Lord, that's really not in my heart to do. My heart is bigger than that. I care about these people. I care about the lost in the state. And many don't realize how dangerous it is to live in Montana or Wyoming or North Dakota. So I'm struggling with many things right now because <laughs> I'm a very tender hearted person with very deep emotions, but I always have to go back to the word of God and say, Lord, I can't live in my emotions. I have to live by what your word says. Give me the grace to do what you've called me to do in this hour. And the Lord has told me that my years of investigative journalism, and there's many, many, many more people with websites, blogs, YouTubes, etc., that are discussing things that were rarely talked about when God called me 25 years ago. But the thing is, he said, I want you now to focus all of your efforts, time, everything, into giving people the one most important piece of news they could ever hear because many in this nation are not yet saved. So the Lord has recommissioned me to go back into the field of full-time evangelism and to lay down my life for the gospel, to reach those children on the reservations and many other people, oh God. So many people need to be reached in such a relatively short time. So I really, um, now that I'm feeling much better, I'm saying, Lord, just heal me completely give me the provision i need it was very expensive to be sick uh these past weeks and the things that i had to purchase so i am very depleted right now financially very honestly and also through continuing to support pastor titus and his church reaching out mightily with the gospel of jesus to the blackfeet tribe up on the reservation there but there's so many more to reach um so friends i do need your support but it is truly for a very important end time cause. We will not always have this opportunity. And once these things come upon this state and this nation, the freedom to evangelize and even be alive to evangelize in many cases is gone. So I need your prayers, I need your love. This is not easy for a single Christian woman in ministry, but I feel a great responsibility. I said, Lord, I will do whatever I can. Whatever you enable me to do, whatever your people enable me to do, I will lay down my life in fulfillment of what you have recommissioned me to do in full-time outreach and evangelism. God made it very plain what I was to do at this point, and I will give my life to do what he's called me to do, as we all as Christians should. That is true discipleship Christianity. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer, that wonderful German saint of God who was persecuted for standing against Hitler and the Nazis, in Nazi Germany and ended up giving his life for his stand as a Christian against the horror of Nazi darkness in Nazi Germany. He wrote a book, The Cost of Discipleship, 
And in that book, he said, when Jesus calls a man or person to follow him, he bids him to come and die. Jesus said the same thing. If anyone would be my disciple, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever seeks to save his life or her life, the same shall lose it. But whosoever will give their lives, lose their lives for my sake and the sake of the gospel, the same will find it. Right now, I'm 71, not getting any younger. <clears throat> I have no desire to seek to save my life at this point. I want to seek to save souls, souls, souls for the everlasting kingdom of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. The Lord told me that this is the final call to people in these states, in this region especially, to get right with God and to get saved. And I'll show you, friends. Pardon me a minute while I get them. I just had these printed up. These are tracks that the Lord led me to design at my own expense using ministry money. It cost over a dollar to get each tract brochure printed up to distribute across the state of Montana. Is Montana a doomsday state? Here is the tract and the message that there will be no second chance once those nukes in Russia and China come to take out our North American missile defense system. That is it. And I have a beautiful message in it of salvation. And I've been giving these out now regularly here in Kalispell, but I want to go far beyond Kalispell to getting these tracks up. Just getting 300 of these printed up cost over $300. Friends, it is expensive to be in ministry, but then souls. What is the cost of an eternal soul? What is its value? They're eternally important. There can be no no price put upon the value of even one soul saved from hell. But it's a very serious time that we live in in America today. And I choose as a devout Christian serving God for 50 years now to take these times very seriously. I also have flyers to post up that I got printed as well. These are sad things. This is not easy emotionally to bear these kinds of truths. But I got this printed up to distribute, to post up, to paste up, whatever, all across the city, all across the state. I'm actually now in contact with people who rent out billboards and I shared with them the situation of what's coming to Montana and I, that I was very interested in getting a simple poster like this printed up with much fewer words but just clearly showing a nuclear weapon going off and in big bold letters across the nuclear explosion no second chance receive Jesus today this is your final call from God because once these things begin to happen there's no turning back Kind of like a picture of Hoover Dam. Once that dam cracks and breaks, there is no bringing the water back into the dam. It's gone. Ruin, destruction, devastation. It's over. And I take seriously the warnings of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord told me emphatically the iniquity of the Amorites. Canaanites, Jebusites, Philistines is full. And if you just... Do your research, friends, as I've been doing. You will weep with me over the horrors and abominations that even people in very high-level places are guilty of committing with impunity and are not being punished. They will, by Almighty God, someday, but they're literally getting away with it now. But, oh, I would not want to stand in their shoes in the day of judgment, but I cannot believe the degree of sin and depravity and darkness and wickedness that I see in the land in a continent that was once dedicated to the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel. And I said, Lord, 
as painful as it is for me to comprehend that great and terrible judgments are coming. I cannot deny the truth and I am on the Lord's side and I have to be honest, but it is still painful, very painful to comprehend these things. But God has told me he is restoring me to the greatest news of all, the great commission to reach every soul I can for him in the greatest time we have left. So friends, I do need your prayers. I do need your love. I do need your encouragement. None of this is easy. And to be in a state like this, you have to deal with very normal human emotions when you know factually what is coming. And the Holy Spirit's giving people visions even. I said, Lord, I put my life in your hands, but souls have to be reached for Christ. The Great Commission has never ceased to be an order and a marching order from Almighty God to the body of Christ. But how few Christians have chosen to truly dedicate their lives, their future, their destiny, all that they have and all that they can ever become to the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel and the Great Commission and reaching one more soul for Jesus Christ. Do you realize to me to get quality Bibles like the Action Bible for children and I desperately want to get them out on the reservations here in Montana because many of the children have learning disabilities because of great poverty in their homes, their reservations, and they can best learn with pictures that speak a thousand years or a thousand words, Jesus healing miracles. We have to help them understand these things. And uh, to get a hundred Bibles for these children to hand out free of charge to minister to them, that's $2,000 right there, you know. It's not, uh, I am also dealing with the fact that I have a 1999 Ford truck that has almost 300,000 miles on it now, diesel, and it has had to go in for repairs more times than I can count, and it's frightening to think of traveling across the broad expanses, very desolate plains, um, Montana is one of the least populated states in America to get these Bibles and Christian ministry tools and materials out to these people and to work with Pastor Titus, that wonderful man of God, Blackfeet Indian, working with his people to reach them for Christ before the end comes. I'm working with him and consider him my pastor at this point. He's a wonderful, sincere man of God that I trust with all my heart. But I need your prayers. I need your love. I need your encouragement. I have no husband to get the love and compassion I need from, to be strengthened with. I have no children to hug and to hold me up. I was called by God many years ago to be single in ministry so that I would not be distracted in serving him. I've obeyed him, but that means that my only true family is you, the body of Christ. And that's why God created the body of Christ, members one of another, as Paul described throughout the Bible. But many Christians don't even understand the concept of the body of Christ. It's been lost in today's modern society and modern churches and churchianity where we are not loving one another as Christ commanded as a commandment equal to all the others. Jesus said a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. This is a commandment. But I have witnessed people even committing suicide out of sheer heartache and desperation. When the body of Christ, when they were in severe crisis, and the body of Christ would not be the biblically defined body of Christ unto them in their hour of greatest need and crisis. As one person told me, these people going to churches and pastors for help, desperately needing it, and no help was coming forth and no love and support and encouragement. They concluded that the Bible was not true, that Jesus did not love them, and their only exit out of the dark world of trying to come out of Satanism, for example, up in Ohio and Indiana, where I ministered much, their only exit was to commit suicide to escape the torment because the church would not be the church. Christians would not care, would not love, would not risk and put their lives at risk, even in some cases, to help these people. But we are called to lay down our lives for others. We are called to a very high calling in Christ Jesus. When you call yourself, and I call myself a Christian, it is a high calling filled with grave responsibility and accountability in the sight of God. I fear God, and no matter how much my flesh may be afraid, or worn out, or tired, and weary, I still have great accountability in the sight of God to do what he has called me to do, and to live up to his word, 
as revealed through Jesus Christ. That is just lost on so many people in the world of Christianity today. There's a vast difference between true discipleship Christianity and studying carefully the conditions of true discipleship to be his disciple and churchianity, what it's evolved into in society today. And it's not just in America, it's that way all over the world. Friends, it only takes a second in a church or an evangelistic crusade when they give the altar call to raise your hand saying, yes, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And absolutely, if that is a true from the heart acceptance of Christ instantly, you are born again from the inside. God's Holy Spirit creates a new, divine, eternal, everlasting spirit. That part of you that will never die so that when your mortal body dies, your eternal born again spirit, born of God, ascends into glory in heaven, awaiting that glorious resurrection body. But it takes a lifetime of perseverance, a lifetime of commitment, and holding your feet to the fire of the word of God to forge a true disciple of Jesus Christ and the cross. As Jesus said to Ananias, uh, a disciple of Christ, after Paul the apostle, who, who was once called Saul, who was out on his high horse ready to come to Damascus with orders, to arrest those pesky, terrible Christians before he knew Jesus. The Lord stopped him dead in his tracks, knocked him off his horse. He laid on the ground and he said, Lord, who are you? And it was Jesus replied, I, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. And, and uh, why do you hate me? You know, and Jesus spoke to Ananias in that city. He was a believer in Jesus. He said, go and anoint and pray for uh Paul, Saul, he was Saul at that time, and, uh, you know, minister to him because he's my chosen vessel. I have chosen him, and I will show him what? I will show him what great things he must suffer for my sake. He didn't say, oh, happy la-la lamb because he's received Jesus life's a bed of roses and God's a big sugar daddy in the sky who exists only to silly glut or every women everything. Oh boy, rich money, prospering. Well, yes, we need money for ministry. And yes, we need to prosper, but not the way so many of these prosperity preachers <laughs> teach it so they can have bigger homes, bigger jets, nicer cars. That is not the priority of the widow's mites and tithes and offerings at all, friends. Jesus rather said to Ananias, I will show Paul what great things he must suffer for my sake to fulfill the great commission to preach the gospel to the Gentiles and the lost to take up the cross and confess Christ before men and I have been holding my feet to the fire of the word of God for 50 years plus now ever since I got saved in 1971 and went to Bible college I said Lord I, if I'm going to be a Christian I want to be the real deal I want to be the real thing give me the grace to hold my feet to the fire and to align my life with your word I have been through things, friends, a grown man would cry over and probably not make it through. <laughs> I've had pastors too afraid to even have me in their church because of the persecutions I've been through. And they were so afraid that if I come to their church or I speak there, they'll get persecuted just for having me there because of some of the things God's called me to do. But again, the cross will ever be the cross. It is not a bed of roses. It has sent me to jail. It has sent me to prison for Christ's sake, saving the unborn. It has put me in life-threatening circumstances. It has cost well-paying careers more than once in my life to put all of that aside when God called me to go do something else. But it's worth it because we're living for eternity. With the judgments that God has shown me and other honest Christians that are coming upon America, there is no normal future left for this nation, friends. Judgment and, of course, aided with sinful, wicked people is bringing this nation down, down, down. And only those who have anchored their faith in Jesus Christ on that solid rock and are willing to pay the price of true discipleship to remain faithful unto the end, he that endureth unto the end, for I tell you without apology, great persecution is coming. And many of people will leave this world as martyrs in this generation, here even in America. 
Only true discipleship friends will make it with what is coming. But we're living not for this world, not for this world and its rewards. We as true disciples of Christ and the cross are living for an everlasting kingdom that shall never be destroyed. We're living for eternity. We're living for eternal souls to be saved forevermore and to enter into the kingdom of God and his glory, though this earthly body be destroyed. Even as with the early church, fed to the lions in the Roman Colosseum, nailed to crosses, destroyed by gladiators, but they knew they had a greater hope. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So friends, we have our own forms of Roman Colosseums and persecutions. Christians under communism for over a hundred years have known that in many nations and in other countries as well. But it, it is truly the cross, the shot of the cross and much judgment is passing over this nation and put yourself under the blood, your loved ones under the blood and seek God's mercy and grace. Some people I have spoken to even told me the Lord told them after praying, take your small children and leave America while you can because of the things that are coming. Listen to God and do what he tells you. But right now, I don't have that luxury of just exiting this country when God has put such a great responsibility on me to continue sharing the gospel until I can do so no more. So I need your prayers. I need your love sent from afar. I need your encouragement. And absolutely, financial support is so critically important to get the Bibles to get the tools, to get the materials. Right now I have two big boxes. One of them is going up to Pastor Titus's church on the Indian Reservation, the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, Browning, Montana. It's a beautiful, full, uh, deluxe set of flannel graph um, backgrounds depicting Israel, Jerusalem, many things, uh, and Golgotha and the cross and flannel graph figures of Jesus, the disciples, the miracles, the things that he did to be used as visual education to help educate these precious children in his church about Jesus Christ. I have one for his church and another for another, maybe even personal use. But friends, I have so many needs that I'm going to proceed and I truly need your prayers and your love and encouragement at this time. The body of Christ is needed to stand in support with one another, especially at times like this. And I have been standing with so many others, going through so many trials, including my friend Sylvia, faced with many trials in her life. She would not be alive today if I had not stood with her through those trials, prayed with her, loved her, encouraged her, helped her. And God has done great things as a result. And she is just on fire for Jesus and ready to do many things for him. So friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Keep praying about the horrible forest fires here in this region of the country, um, Alberta, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and with the smoke just spilling right over here into Montana, make it very unhealthy for a lot of people. But there's many other things to pray about. Pray against nuclear strikes on American soil. Pray against the threats of Russia and pray that God in his mercy will hold these things back yet a season longer till many more souls can be reached for the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel. And pray that I can get these tracks out all over this very real, tragically real doomsday state. Um, the word of God does not return void and I pray that many are moved to the information I put out, the websites I lead them to, confirming all this <clears throat> to get right with God because this is a time to get right with God truly. No second chance of many things that are coming. So praise the Lord. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today. And yes, in spite of everything I've just shared, because of Jesus Christ, there is hope. Like the old Bill Gaither song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone because I know he holds the future. And <clears throat> life is worth the living friends. just because he lives and I have a goal now and a reason to live and it's to reach one more precious child for Christ one more precious senior citizen for Christ one more hurting person one more homeless person God has given me a commission and I pray to God he gives me the strength 
<clears throat> the grace to fulfill it because that is absolutely what I'm going to do at this time. And you pray for me too. I have so many more things to share with you, but keep me in your prayers. And this is Pamela Ray for, with Hope for Today at this time. And I want to pray for all of you briefly before I close this video. Heavenly Father, I lift up to you all the viewers of this video. Many are incredulous, thinking, no, these things could not happen. It's not that time for America, etc. But for honest Christians who have been listening for decades to the voice of God, fasting and praying as intercessors over this nation, we know that, in fact, those days are here and draw ever closer with great and tragic things coming. That in many cases, God himself is allowing to bring people to brokenness and to an end of themselves and to come to Jesus Christ at last. Be merciful, Lord, to your children watching. For many have already been through hard things and hardships and they don't need more. They need love, they need healing, they need building up, they need strength, they need mercy, they need compassion and provision. And Lord, I pray for these people that you would bless them, heal them, love them, lift them up all over the world, all across Canada and North America, Lord. Have mercy on your people. And those who are not yet saved, have mercy on their eternal souls and save them, Father. Hold back the nukes yet a season longer from this nation, North America and Canada, till we can reach the lost for you, Father, as quickly as possible. Bring forth miracles, signs, and wonders and glorious things to move many to brokenness and repentance, Father God. And bless me with the finances I need to reach people for you, Father, in the time we have left. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and agree together. Amen. So God bless you. Jesus loves you. And keep your hope and trust in him. And he will bring you through to victory. Hallelujah. Goodbye for now.